Good morning everyone. Hi, this is Race Director Brent. I'm out here at Camp Big Timber in Elgin, Illinois. Site of the 2020 Big Timber Cross Country Challenge to be held on November 1st. Because we won't be able to have a course preview this year, I'm out here this morning on a beautiful sunny morning, about 88 degrees. It won't be like this on race day, but I'm out here I, uh, because we won't be able to do a course preview this year. Uh, and as a result, I just wanted to uh, shoot a quick little video of some of the key areas about the course so you kind of know what's waiting for you when you get out here on race day. A couple of quick notes before I get started. Number one, I've never used this camera before. I'm not very familiar with how it works. So if I screw anything up or sound like a complete idiot, I apologize for that. Secondly, um, uh, I rather than just boring you with a an endless 35-minute uh, video of, of the course. Um, I will be turning the camera on and off as we get to different areas on the course, make it a little bit easier for you to digest. Other than that, uh, I just want to let you know how I got here. I went uh, from Randall Road. I turned westbound on Big Timber Road, proceeded for one mile to the stoplight at Terrell Road, and then I made a left-hand turn into the camp uh, there at the stoplight. The uh, uh, parking area and the main lodge, you'll see them as you come up the driveway, and uh, then we'll uh, work our way over here to the um, starting area, which is, I'll turn the camera around here now, if I can, which is right over there. You can kind of see through the the trees uh, where we're at. I'll, I'll give you another shot of this a little bit later so you can get a sense of bearing as to where we're at but you can kind of see the parking area over there in front of that gray work shed. So the parking area is right in front of the main lodge. You'll see it there so uh, that's where you'll be parking and then you'll be making the walk across this grassy era area over here to the starting line. Let's uh, go over here quickly take a quick look the map of the course, give you an idea of where we're going to be going. The start and the finish is the same for both races, the three mile and the five mile, right out here in this big grassy field. We kind of go across the grassy field onto the roadway, proceed down the roadway, bearing left just a little bit to follow the driveway all the way around to here. At about the half mile mark, we will go up a hill. Once we get to the top of that hill, we are on the perimeter loop of the property, all the way basically around the property, across the creek, into the wilds. Here is the creek crossing. I'll show you that in greater detail soon. And then back up to where we go up the hill again. If you're doing the three mile, you will only do one perimeter loop. So when you get up to the hill the second time, you're going to come down the back side of the hill, onto the roadway, and back into the finish. If you're doing the five mile, you're actually going to do a second loop of the perimeter with a second creek crossing back to the hill. And when you get up to the top of the hill for the third time, then you're just going to come down the back side, onto the roadway, and back to the finish. The uh, little entry onto the perimeter and exit from the perimeter is about a half mile each way and the perimeter loop itself is about a two mile loop so half two and half is three and the half two loops is another four plus the other half back into the finish that makes the five so with that let's get started and see what's waiting for us out there i should mention that the uh, starting line and the finish line will be a wide cross-country style of start and a wide uh, finish uh, because the race is chip time we don't have to worry about a finishing shoot we don't want anybody uh, in real close contact with anybody uh, else so uh, we're doing the wide cross-country start and wide finish let's go On the road now, come around this bend.
the lodge as you can see it's right up the hill there Now we approach T Lodge and we veer left just a little bit. To go through this opening and onto the gravel road here. Just to give you an idea, the creek is right over here, but we'll come to that soon enough. So we continue on the road. And we'll follow this for about another quarter mile. Back in a minute. Okay, coming up alongside the uh, BB shed here. We're at about the half mile mark. And this is where we make a left hand turn and get onto the actual trail portion. Uh, so a little bit of a deceiving uphill, but nothing too tough. Let's see if we can get up this without too much effort. Okay, so here we are at the top of the hill. You can kind of see the panorama of where we're at. If you're, gonna, if you're doing the three mile, you'll be at this point twice. Once when you come up the hill the first time, the second time you're going to go straight ahead and you're going to go down the back side of the hill and over to the road just a short ways away. Nice hawk flying by there. If you're doing the five mile, you're actually going to be at this point three times. Once after that first half mile, when you'll turn left to start the perimeter loop, you'll do one perimeter loop, come back here a second time, turn left again to start the second perimeter loop. And the third time when you're here, you're just going to go straight ahead down the back side of the hill and out onto the road to make your way back to the finish. So here we go. Left hand turn to start the perimeter loop. Back in a minute. We come across the driveway from the top of the hill. We're getting right onto this little pathway right here. It's not very long. Just a comment about the pathways. Are, they're very resourceful and very helpful. Ranger Jeremy here at the camp has done a phenomenal job cutting us some pathways this year so that we could offer both a three mile and a five mile option uh, unlike last year when we only had the four mile but i want to mention that jeremy was only able to finish cutting these pathways a few weeks ago um, we will clean up these pathways a little bit although this is much better than what it was about two weeks ago and uh, we'll have things ready to go for you but uh, it's just kind of a twisty turny part get you acclimated to this type of a path this type of a trail if you pass you probably try to separate yourself from the individual you're passing as much as possible and uh, nobody having problems so anyhow here we come up on the back side of the work shed now and now we start on a nice long straight away these trailers won't be here so we'll be right along the weeds over here we 
we're gonna go that large clump of trees there in the distance let you know when we get there okay so we've made our way alongside the work shed that you see up ahead there and make our way across this uh, large grassy field hugging pretty closely to the uh, the tree line and the picnic tables that you see there but uh, we're going to be coming right through here and angling right for this uh, opening here in these trees so let's go that way when we get to this opening you'll see that we are back to the start finish area however we are not going to run through the middle of that we're going to hug the tree line here on our left and we're just kind of circle around this area right here so um, we want to go around the start finish area not through it this also gives me a good chance to uh, mention I would highly recommend that you pick up your bib and your race packet either at the Dick Pond store in Hoffman Estates on Friday evening or the Dick Pond store in St. Charles on Saturday afternoon so that you do not have to do it on race day. We want to try to minimize interaction between individuals on race day as much as possible as I'm sure you can understand and so if you can get to one of the two stores on Friday or Saturday to get your bib and uh, packet we'd sure appreciate that. As you can see, we've now kind of circled around what was the start finish area. Now we just have a small little downhill here that will take us over to this clump of trees directly in front of us here. So I'll be back in just a second here. So here we are. We've made it down that little downhill onto this little footbridge right here come across it just a short ways up we're going to take a left hand turn onto this single track trail to come across this little footbridge that you see right here I'm sure that Jeremy will cut that limb for us or oh, maybe not we might just leave it I don't know now we'll probably cut that limb so that it's out of the way don't want anybody to trip fall off the bridge but uh We'll be coming down that little single path across this bridge then you got a little bit of an uphill here and follow this around to the treehouse where we will then veer off to the left get on this little path right here to take it out onto the road where we make a left hand turn a couple of safety reminders number one this is a race and I understand that everyone will be trying to get the best position they possibly can but when it comes to passing please be mindful and respectful of the other people around you um, there's plenty of places to to pass here in the first mile uh, we saw the large grassy field that we just came across a couple sections long sections of gravel road like this so these are ideal places for you to pass you can move around someone with some space between you um, but when we get back into the the wilds which we are approaching here in about a quarter of a mile um, if you can try to avoid passing as much as possible um, on the on the on the primitive portion of the uh, of the trail um, also if you find that you must walk at any time during the race even if it's just for a short little bit please do not walk in the middle of the pathway instead 
who is far to the right over there as you possibly can so that others can pass on the left over here without any contact between you or even uh, closeness to one another um, so that that's passing let's uh, let's be respectful of one another and uh, 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 try to pass in the most appropriate wide open spaces rather than back in on the uh, more primitive trail portions you can see we're coming up on a washroom here this is about a mile and a half into the race you, this should be open on race day so you can use it if you need to or want to also too you might notice on this large tree that we're approaching a, a red and yellow arrow um, I just want to point out that those markings are from last year's race and while many of them are still correct or relevant some of them are not since we have modified the course this year so uh, if you want to pay attention to those markings just be careful but for the most part I would say simply observe the um, um, directional arrows and different signs that we'll have out on the course that also reminds me to tell you there will be very few volunteers out on the course again for obvious reasons and uh, so if you take a tumble or maybe get lost just maybe try to find your way back to the main lodge as best as you can if you need immediate help let another runner know uh, so that they can get word to race officials as soon as possible so right now we're going to step into this little pathway here this is kind of the gateway into the primitive or what I call the wilds section of the course a little bit of a downhill here I kind of like this section it's kind of fun slanted a little bit as we're on the side of a hill but uh, it's actually kind of fun um, we just go along here for a little bit give you an idea of what you're about to encounter in the wilds and here we go we're making a left hand turn right here uh, if you've never run a trail race before uh, my only advice would be shorten up your stride a little bit unlike road running where you can have the luxury of a little longer uh, stride a little bit more fluid stride trail running you're probably better off with a shorter choppier stride this is mushy right through here this would be kind of fun on race day uh, a little bit of water runoff but uh, you can see that right there some water but uh, getting back to that running form, yeah, you want to shorten up your stride a little bit. Short, choppy steps tend to work well. Um, keep your arms loose and maybe even um, out a little bit. Rather against your side, maybe a little bit more 90 degree angle to your body. That way if you do get onto some uneven ground, your arms and elbows can kind of act as a stabilizer to... Uh, help keep you upright finally too as you can see me doing here with the camera you want to keep your eyes down on the ground maybe six to eight to ten feet out in front of you so that you can find the best pathway that you want to follow through a certain section um, and get through without any real difficulties so I can say we're into the wilds right now And this is what you'll see when you get back here, including maybe a down tree or two or three. Um, this one's pretty easy to get over. We just kind of step over it, not too much. There's that one. And just after it, we're gonna come up to a, a drainage ditch here that runs into the creek. The creek is just off to my left right now.
Maybe you can see it there. But right here, you'll see there's a drainage ditch. Goes back up into the woods a little bit, but uh, this little drainage ditch, it's dry right now on race day. We've had some snow and rain here in the fall. It'll probably be a little, uh, little wet. Maybe have some water in it. But as you see, you can get through it pretty quickly and easily. We'll probably clean some of that uh, brush out of there just to make it a little bit more uh, visible as so you can get good footing through it. So I'm going to keep the camera running here. Just because we are about to come up on a second fallen tree. This one's a little bit bigger, but uh, at the same time, it's still pretty easy to get over. I'm just stepping over like that. But we're good there. There's the creek right there. And going up here just a little ways. This branch across here does not count as a fallen tree. I'll just you just step over that. But this one right here, this definitely counts as a fallen tree. So just be prepared. You got three fallen trees, relatively close proximity to one another, and uh, uh, you're going to have to probably hurdle this one or just step over it as I've done there. So three fallen trees and a drainage ditch that you got to encounter right here. Be back in a minute. Okay, we continue winding our way through the early parts of the wild and come across this little bridge right here. Come up that little incline and we come out here where we take a left hand turn and we encounter this bridge. This bridge is affectionately known as the dam bridge because it literally sits on a dam. Anyhow, here's the creek to the left. Pretty calm, pretty mild today. Creek to the right. Too bad we aren't running the race today. Come to the end of this creek, I will tell you that there will be either a ramp or a stair built at this end of the ramp. So you do not have to take uh, the two foot step that I'm about to make. And if I fall, please don't laugh at me. Us old guys, we need love too, but uh, here we go. Oops. Almost, almost lost it. So that's that. Turn left, and we continue on in the wilds. Back in a minute. Continuing along, see the Union Pacific Railroad right up here. Hopefully there won't be a train going by during race time, but uh, if there is, a, no extra charge for that. I really kind of like this section of the course under these trees. Maybe there'll still be a little bit of fall color uh, on November 1st. But uh, it's actually kind of enjoyable right here. There are a couple speed bumps here in the wilds. This is one of them. And good to go there. All right, we'll keep moving along. If any of you ran the old cross country challenge that was held out at the horse farm in Gilbert's many years ago, about 15 years ago, this course probably is beginning to remind you a little bit of that. I want to point this section out here because as you see, we go down a little bit of an incline and then there is a portion of ground that is right now 
not too bad a little muddy a little wet but but no standing water or anything like that on race day this probably will be a swampy mushy uh, mess but at least it gives you an introduction to the creek crossing that is ahead so there's that there's another small section similar just up ahead that will probably also be underwater a little bit won't be anything too serious just like I say kind of swampy uh, damp uh, type thing this is it right here you're kind of going through and you can kind of see where the ground is a little chewed up but uh, again shouldn't be too difficult to get through and is a nice introduction to uh, the creek that lies just around the bend. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so after about uh, three fallen trees that we've had to go over, a couple of marshy, mushy areas that we had to go through, a um, couple few speed bumps that we had to get over, uh, we just made this bend. We are not too far from the creek crossing at this point as a matter of fact before you actually see the creek crossing you're probably going to hear the creek crossing only because what spectators might be here on race day which we really want to try to discourage but we understand that some of you may have a parent or a spouse or somebody that's had to come with you that's fine but just to, again, ask them to keep in mind safety and that they don't yell out to you or, uh, or yell at other runners. Spectators should probably wear masks. But uh, what the spectators will be here will probably be at the creek. So here's this last little speed bump we got to get up and over. And once we do that, we come just down a ways right there is the creek those of you that were here last year you may remember that to get into the creek we had about a two foot drop off from the bank down to the water level um, we have cleaned that up this year made it a little bit better for you so uh, you'll see that here in just a couple seconds so we're coming up along the creek right now the crowd is going wild and we make this left hand turn and here's the entrance into the creek welcome to the creek now a nice thing today like I said it's too bad we aren't running the race today this water is calm slow clear and not very deep as you can see it is not even over my ankles at this point nice thing is you can see all the rocks on the bottom and make our way across now on race day this creek will be much wider it will probably come halfway up these stones here so it will be probably about 25 percent wider than what you see it right now it will also be much higher if we've had a rainy or snowy fall last year the creek was about knee high and finally the water in this creek will be significantly colder last year it was bitterly ice cold but again you can see I'm just walking back and forth here. You can see some large rocks right here. Some large rocks over here. So, utilize this video. Pick your way. Pick a route to make your way across the creek. Nice rock right here that's totally submerged. But, uh, You'll make it across without any problem, I'm sure. Just a note, uh, these large rocks that you see right here, those will probably be underwater 
if not completely underwater, at least partially underwater, they'll probably be slick. Um, so I would probably not consider that an option on race day. Um, as a matter of fact, because of the amount of debris right next to those rocks, I would probably get a little bit further out away from those rocks rather than staying right in next to them. Also too, if you're unsure of the creek, we will have a rope suspended from this bank across the creek to that bank that you can hold on to to make your way across. Once again though, I would avoid uh, using the big rocks that you see here if they are wet and submerged on race day. This is a wonderful creek. I love this creek. And actually today it's very, very refreshing. It feels great. So, anyhow, we come out of the creek, up the gravel road, and we veer to the left to get back on the driveway that we were on at the very very beginning of the race to make our way back around to the bb shed the bb gun shed and up the hill to the hilltop there in a moment okay so here we are back at the bb gun shed and getting ready to make a left hand turn to go up the hill if you are running the three mile you will go up this hill twice if you are running the five mile you will go up this hill three times the first time you did it at the half mile mark probably didn't seem so tough but after taking on the wilds this hill is going to be a challenge So we get up here Take this slight bend to the right Then we come out at the hilltop If you are doing the 5 mile This is the second time you are here You will turn left To start your second and final loop with a perimeter If you are doing the 3 mile when you are here for the second time, you are going to go straight across and come down the hill on this side. For the five milers, you'll do this when you get to the hill for the third time. Little dog leg here. Apologies for the camera jiggle. the driveway and go right We're now on the driveway to head back to the finish line once again you're only doing this once at the end of the second loop for the three at the end of the second time to the hill for the three mile at the end of the third time atop the hill for the with the five mile. Back in a minute. Okay, so we've come along the road right up around this bend. Going to continue to follow the road past the washrooms, the gray building on the right. This is your sprint into the finish. Once again, the finish is a wide cross country finish. There is no shoot. So just pick a point and go for it. When you get to these two guardrails, just make a sprint straight up the grass.
not much of a sprint, I know. Give the old man a break. And here we are at the finish line of the cross country challenge. Thanks for running, everybody. Hope to see you on November 1st.